Good morning, everyone. It's Kay Kaltoff, and welcome to a Stamp and Chat with Kay. I see we have a couple of people on already. Good morning, Philomena. It's nice to have you here. I am doing something for this new year that I think might inspire you too. How many of you have put things away for good because they're too nice to use every day? I think all of us have done that. And I have decided this year, 2020, I am gonna take out some of those things that I've set aside and start using them. And one thing, I mean, one thing that happens when you do this is that you risk, you sort of take a risk because what if you wreck it? Or what if, what if you break it? Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm willing to take that chance. I have to share something with you. My grandmother, who passed away at the age of 97, I inherited these beautiful, beautiful glasses from her. She had a large collection of depression glass, and this match, the depression glass, so it was sort of a petal pink color, wasn't like real pinky. It was just, well, actually, it's very similar, very similar to the pink we're using on our card today. Very much a petal pink, just a, a hint of kind of a orangey look to it. And so um, these beautiful glasses have this decal on them. So I don't know that they're depression glass. They were probably something from the 1950s that she probably picked up at a garage sale, but they always went with the depression glass and I always kept them with the depression glass. And of course, I'm not using the depression glass. Um, that I still, I do take that out for tea parties and things with the girls. But then we're using, you know, teacups and things like that. But we're not using the pretty water glasses. So I've started, uh, actually I pulled that out earlier this month. And I've started drinking my water from the really pretty glasses that I inherited from my grandmother. So... Yes. Oh, good. We have so many more people joining us. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. So I want to know if you use some of those good things in your life. And if they, and if you do, tell us what the good things are, because maybe that will inspire some of us to think, oh yeah, that's right. I should be using that. So welcome. Welcome. Hello. All of you guys are sharing already. I'll, I'll show you what I hope to share. I hope to do a giveaway <laughs> on more of the basic rhinestone pearl or basic rhinestones in the petal pink color. I have just this much left. I hope I'm getting an order in today or tomorrow where when I do the drawing in a couple of days, I'll be able to split a pack with our winners. Um, so, so yes, the, this is, this is just about all I have left. I am really low on supplies. I tell you what, you know why it is. It's because of the product shares that I've been doing. So if you don't already have the January through June spring catalog product shares from me, take a look at my blog. You can just click on any one of the January blog posts and there'll be a link for you about, oh, towards the bottom where you can um, click on it and go learn about product share. So I do a paper share, I do an embellishment share, a ribbon share. You can buy whichever piece that you need or you can put them all together and get an everything share. So all of the details are there. And it seems like, you know, I just, the, I only offer them through January, but it's been a very successful sharing share season. So, <laughs> but I keep having to run into my personal stash to get these shares out. So I'm just, I'm just low on everything, but I should have an order coming in soon. You know, it's just more important for me to get it in the mail than worry about, worry about anything else. All right. Hello. Goodness. So, so Karen's telling me she uses her good china for holidays. However, she started using some of the small little dishes in her craft room. Oh, that's so special. I do that too, Karen. I have some really special items that, that, oh, in fact, I see one across, I see one across the room and I need to grab that before we start today because it's got my glue in it. So good thing you mentioned that, Karen. So yes, one of the special things that I use in my craft room is my little glue holder. This is a little special dish. Well, it's, it had a little tiny flower bouquet in it and my mother got it in the hospital when I was born. You'd think I'd have been born around Easter, but I wasn't. I was actually born January 15th, 
but somehow or another, this was the little giveaway that my mother got when, I don't know if somebody gave it to her, if the hospital gave it to her or what. I, she passed away before I was able to ask her about it. Because of course I didn't have it until after she passed away and I'd never really thought to ask. But it's so cute, it's a, re it's a really cute little glue holder and I just love using it. And so I have it in my, in my office and use it every single day. Okay, well goodness, we have a lot of people joining us here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, we are gonna make this card today so pretty. And we're using the Parisian dyes. And I know there's a lot of things that, that go in this product suite, the Parisian Blossom Suite. There's a couple of bundles. In fact, when I do put up the um, PDF and all the information related to this card, I will include the bundle numbers because who wants to order dies without the coordinating stamp set? Or who wants to order a stamp set without the coordinating dies? So I will include the bundle number even though this particular card only uses the dies. One of the things that I love about this um, bundle is that you can feel like you're exploring the world just sitting in your craft room. And I, I love how when I stamp, my imagination just goes wild. I was, I was thinking as I was playing with this card, I was thinking, ooh, I wonder if Stampin' Up! is getting ready to send us uh, uh, to Paris on an incentive trip. <laughs> Maybe that's the next destination. You know, so you just sort of think of all these things as you're crafting and you almost feel like you're, like you're there, like, like maybe you're, you're at a cafe in Paris, except you're really here sipping on your coffee and you're making a card. But I love how um, using different stamp sets takes me to different places and, and different times. And I feel almost like I'm having an, ex an experience right there, even though I'm sitting in my craft room. So it is a beautiful suite, as Yvonne is mentioning. And uh, I am going to I am going to get into that in a minute, but you know what? I have a few cards I want to share with you. So one of the things that I was doing recently is going through all the Christmas cards. Oh, I, I actually forgot to share one with you. Somehow it just stayed in our family pile. Like whenever I get a homemade card, I usually grab it and rush it right downstairs, throw it into my lineup to share with you on my Facebook uh, lives and I missed this one. I was going through all the cards and like, oh my goodness, there was this handmade card in the pile and I hadn't shared it with you yet. And I want to do that because it's a, it's just a sweet, sweet customer from the East Coast who's been with me since I think 2013 and she fell and she hurt her hip. And so she has been out of commission for a while, but she did send me this beautiful Christmas card and it uses the Mary Moo, Mary Moo stamp set. This is what it looks like. And the thing that I love, love, love about it is she used the hammered uh, metal. I'm gonna try to get this close to the camera, the hammered metal on the snowbank here. And it just looks so rustic. So it's the hammered metal embossing folder. I believe we can still purchase it through at least uh, like June 2nd or something like that. Now, so it's just so cool. So it's got a couple of moose. They've got their little flannel uh, scarves on and, and I love it. So thank you so much, Maureen Wheatley, for sharing this card with me. Um, and, and obviously, I just feel terrible that I didn't, that I didn't share it sooner. Um, then I... I always go through the cards that people send to me at Christmas and I will pull out a couple every year that I want to keep forever. I have a little forever pile of inspiration so I want to share that with you. This card was given to me and they're not Stampin' Up! cards. Okay, so let's just preface that. These are, I don't know, this one, this one's not homemade. I think it's made somewhere but I don't know. I don't see it marked. Maybe she made it. I don't know. But it's beautiful, so I'm going to throw it in my pile for inspiration. And it looks like this. Isn't that a beautiful Christmas card? Oh my gosh. And it's got like ribbon, ribbon underneath the cutouts. And I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, what a great idea. So next year when I'm making Christmas cards, you might see some, some ribbon with pearls on on my cutouts. Isn't that cool? And then she's got like a little metallic Merry Christmas here. So this was given to us by some friends that Steve works with. And so I just, it, this, this made the pile, <laughs> the non-stampin' up card pile that <laughs> is really very slim. But I do keep a couple every year that I love. And then the 
second one that I want to share with you was some friends from Texas. We actually lived in Texas for seven years. And do you know what? I actually introduced this couple to each other. I met the gal when I was, it was, uh, it was back, way back in the, was it the 80s? It was. It was way, way back in the mid 80s. And um, we were out celebrating Halloween. And I went to the bathroom, met a girl in the bathroom, and she was so cute and nice. And I said, You should come back to our table. There's a guy at our table that uh, just broke up with somebody, and I'm sure he'd love to visit with you. <laughs> oh, did they visit? Anyway, long story short, a couple of kids later, they've been married 30 years. Um, and it was all because of me. Here we go. Look at the cute card they sent us. Not cute. I shouldn't even say cute. It doesn't even fall in the cute category. It's elegant. So Karen and Craig Boswell, your card made the cut this year. So incredibly beautiful. So again, I will use this as inspiration for my card making next year. So that will go into my pile of Christmas things that I keep from year to year. All right, so let's go on. Um, I wanted to share that I spring fling is coming up. So all of you that are local or don't mind driving a couple of hours, we do have a wonderful spring fling. And I received, I've been receiving registrations already. Um, you probably have seen my newsletter link. I keep it on my Stamping to Share Facebook page or in my uh, kind of uh, stamping to Share group, which is called Happy Stamper Stamping to Share, but one of the gals from Iowa that comes up every year, her name is Diana McMillan, she, she when she sent her check to me, she, she sent this cute little uh, snowman cut out, says, yay, spring fling, and he's just flinging his little snowballs all over the place, so I thought that was pretty cute, so thank you so much, Diana, for that cute little extra that you've put in with your check and your registration. And then I want to share with you, so I know we all love our kids, but they don't all follow in our footsteps. In fact, I have three daughters and none of them are really into crafting or into um, anything to do with stamping up, which is just a shame, but you know, it's the way it is. Anyway, I have one daughter who is so much like my dad her name is Carol, and whenever she she gives me a card, just like my dad, he just covers the front of the of the envelope with stickers. So I just had to share that with you. And then her card, <clears throat> not handmade, but cute little thing peeking out, and then she fills the inside of it. So she they are creative with all kinds of little confetti, which I thought was pretty sweet. So that's, that was from my daughter Carol. And then my other daughter had gotten paper pumpkin back when she lived. Um, down in Rochester, and she used to do paper pumpkin with her roommate. So when they'd take a study break, they'd do paper pumpkin together. And she had just a few supplies left over from her paper pumpkin days. And she said she made her very last card with her paper pumpkin supplies for my birthday. So here it is. She said she made that the morning um, of my birthday. So pretty cute. So thank you, Kari. That was kind of nice of you. And one more card to share before we get to our project. This, this one is from Deb Till, and she is from Iowa, and she's become a very good friend. She's another Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and she used the stamp set called Sending, Sending Thoughts, something like that, Sending Loving Thoughts. I don't know. It's a celebration set. I don't have them all memorized yet. But she also used the paper that's going to be returning, and I love the colors, and I love the dyes that she used with it. So I wanted to share it here in case it would inspire you as well. So it's a really, really pretty birthday card with the first frost paper that's going to make a comeback next year, and I'm so excited. I love the way this one looks with the pine needles in the background. I love pine trees, and so this is a great card. So thank you so much, my dear friend, Deb. All right, so I'm gonna set all these things aside. That's all I have to share with you today. And then we'll get started on making our card. So let me flip the camera down and we'll get going here. So here is, if you don't have one of these catalogs, be sure to let me know um, if you are looking for a demonstrator. If you already have a demonstrator, you should contact your regular demonstrator and she will get you a catalog. But if you're looking for a demonstrator, contact me and I will get you this catalog in the mail 
And it's our uh, January through June 2020 mini catalog. And the, the suite we're looking at here is the Parisian Blossom Suite. Lots of cards for, a, for your inspiration. And we're going to be using the, it's on this page here, the Parisian dies. So just the dies to make the quick little elegant card that we're making today. And then we're also going to be using the Parisian Flores 3D embossing folder. So I'll give you a real close up look of what that looks like. And on the inside panel of the card, nothing very special, but just a little strip of paper. And so I did want to show you that the Parisian Blossoms Specialty Designer Series paper is a must have. It has and if you order it, be sure at the same time you order the champagne foil if you don't already have it. Because the champagne foil is fabulous. And it's the first time Stampin' Up! has used that particular foil as an embellishment on their specialty paper. So if you go through here, you will see some shine and shimmer. And it's all in the champagne foil. And I just think it's so beautiful. So there's some plain pages too. This is one of my favorites here with the with the handwriting and it's all done in that champagne foil. So beautiful, beautiful um, paper. Here is the bundle. So it includes the Parisian Beauty stamp set along with the uh, coordinating Parisian dies that look like that. And we're going to be using two of three of the dies on our cards. So we're going to use the Eiffel Tower cutout along with the, oh Lord, I'm probably not even gonna say this right, but mercy, is it mercy or mercy or mercy? I have no idea, I know it means thank you. Like I can I can look at something like that in my head and sort of, sort of know what it means, but I don't know how to say it. Um, and then also this little flourish, okay? So that's it, that's all that's on the card along with using this beautiful die or this beautiful embossing folder, the Parisian Flor Flourish. So pretty. And you'll notice that I put little marks on here because I wanted to have it so that, you know, there are, I wanted this little flower to be sort of centered in the card. And so I just marked out where I wanted it to. So when I was running it through the um, die cutting embossing machine, I knew exactly where to place it every single time. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing, we're going to make two cards because I'll do two giveaways. So how do you get into the giveaways? You just have to share. So share this. Come back here and let me know you've shared. So this is five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And this is our basic black paper. Now we're going to put an inside panel on here. And we are going to use Whisper White. So I have two panels here of Whisper White, four by five and a quarter. And then I did go ahead and I put the strip of designer series paper already on here on the bottom, three and a quarter by four inches, because we're gonna leave this blank and we're gonna put this into our card. So I'm just going to use my snail and put one strip at the top. Now, one of the reasons I only use one strip is I wanna keep these cards very loose and elegant and flowing. So just center that in so all of the borders are even. All of your elegant cards are very loose and flowing like that. And this is, if nothing else, at least an elegant card for sure. So we'll set this in and give that a little press. All right, now I want to share a tip with you because I have received a few cards in the mail recently. Um, one of them was actually my own that was returned because I didn't have the correct uh, address. And I was shocked to discover that I had used black cardstock. And when I got the card back and I opened up the envelope, I was shocked to find out that all of the black actually transferred onto the white that was on the inside panel of the card. So from now on, I will not be mailing my cards where black touches white without some protection. So if you're, um, so what you could do is just put a very thin panel of typing paper in there if you want to protect it. The other thing you can do, and because this is such an elegant card, this is what I'll be doing, is I grab some vellum so this is four by five and a quarter. And what I will do is when I mail this card out to my winners next 
later this week is I will have a bit of protection on the inside panel so that when this goes through the mail, the black will not come off onto the white. Now I never noticed this. Even when I've got my cards pressed into um, a box and I'm saving them for some purpose, but I do think that when you mail something, they are putting it under extreme pressure as it's going through those machines. That's why sometimes our embellishments can pop through. Um, and you know how it looks when you get cards in the mail, they're just a mess. So what I will do from now on is put an insert if I have white and black that are touching because I don't want that. I want my cards to arrive in pristine condition and I'm sure that you do too. All right, then the next thing you're going to need, this is such a simple card. You can put these, you can put multiples together very quickly. This is our petal pink uh, card stock, which has been run through my embossing machine with the Parisian florist embossing folder. And as I mentioned, all centered in so that the flower is in the middle and this is four by five and a quarter and I've already done these and they're just beautiful such gorgeous gorgeous embossing then what you're going to do is because there's no ribbon wrap or anything like that we're just going to glue these down onto the front of our card so we'll just add a little uh, multi-purpose liquid glue all the way around just set this in Make sure the four borders are nice and even. Give it a press. I like using the glue because, especially on something that's been embossed, it kind of goes down into the deeper crevices and just helps that card to stick a lot better than, say, snail wood. So we'll just set this in here. We're doing two cards today for the two giveaways. If you're joining me on YouTube, because I always post these to YouTube, to more than likely the giveaway has already been done, but I still love it when people tell me that they've shared. That really is a nice compliment to me. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of these cutouts that I made with the dies from our Parisian dies, and here's a couple of them. This is the Eiffel Tower. So how do you get this down? I've actually found it pretty easy to just flip these over and very carefully I'm going to take my glue and I'm just putting a dot here and then there's some wider strips here so I'm just going to add glue to these wider strips and just a tiny little bit here at the bottom just to keep that leg down on both sides so this is all that's just, that's all I do to add the Eiffel Tower to this card is I just add glue at the top through here, through here, and on each bottom leg. So we're gonna flip this around and we're going to set this right even with the bottom of that panel. So I just get the bottom centered first, move it into place, and then I just gently press all the way down. And that one is on. So let's do this other one now. Again, we're just gonna add a little bit you know, you don't want to press too hard with your glue. You're just going for the tiniest little bits. And again, the easiest way to do this is to um, put the little bottom legs down first and then press it in. So put this down where you want it. Make sure it's even with the bottom of that, pa that embossed panel and then press it all in place. The glue sticks really, really well. You won't have any problems with this coming up. There we go, so that's done. Now, just a teeny bit trickier, but not too much to add these things. So let me just bring this into the picture. So these are, I used cherry cobbler paper to cut this out and just some little scraps. So we've got, got the little sentiment, which I don't know how to pronounce. <laughs> And then we have our, our really cute uh, little flourishes that we're going to, instead of trying to fuss with that eye, just going to have the little flourish up here so it sort of looks like the eye is there and then going all crazy. So what I do for this, for putting these on, is for these that are, they have a fairly large, uh, not large, but a fairly good size area where again, I can take the glue and I'm just gonna tap it on to some of these uh, 
wider spots. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. Just tapping it on little tiny dots is all you need. And then we'll put this onto our cards. I have a little bit different process for the other one. So let's grab this. And we are going to set this sentiment. Notice how I just keep saying sentiment. We're going to set this sentiment so that the M is about right here, just on the edge of the Eiffel Tower. And press that in. And then we're going to do the exact same thing with the one that we have over here. Again, you're just going to put the M onto your Eiffel Tower. And this is a good spot for your sentiment. And the reason it's a good spot is because um, if you know anything about design, imagine where you're working as a tic-tac-toe board and then that bottom right intersection is where you want to have an accent. So that's a perfect place for the sentiment. All right, now to put on this flourish, which actually cut beautifully. I did this as a top 10 card for my downline back in December, um, and it actually went together really well. So it all cut out beautifully. I'm going to take some multi-purpose liquid glue, just add a little bit to my silicone sheet here, or my little silicone craft sheet. And then I just created a little glue handle here. So I have a sponge, a little bit of a, of our stamp and sponge and then I have a little handle and I just ink this or just put this glue onto the sponge and I need a little bit more because it's absorbing into the sponge and not actually going on to my project I want to make sure that it there we go so we want to add just a little bit to these little cutouts then we take the cutout and we're just going to set it over here so that the end of this flourish is coming off the eye like this. Give that a press and it's down for good. This won't be coming up so you can see how how nicely that looks. We're going to do the exact same thing for the second card that I'm making. Just going to ink up my sponge and we're gonna just tap a little bit of this onto the flourish. Whoops. Wanna make sure you get the ends. Then you can pick this up. We'll get this out of the way because we, we wanna make sure we don't get that on anything else. And we'll do the exact same thing. So easy, so pretty. So get that on there, give it a press and it's good to go. There we go, we have our flourishes on. Don't they look great? Now for the perfect finishing touch and what I hope to do is my giveaway provided, provided I did actually order these, I'm hoping I did. Um, we're gonna take our take your pick tool and I'm just gonna take this end of it. I do need to squeeze out just a little bit here. Then we can just grab a couple of rhinestones. These are in the petal pink color. I think they call them champagne rhinestones. Um, we're just going to grab a few here. Let me just see. I think I'll just use the littlest ones. So we'll, whoops, we'll grab this off. We'll put one up here. And we'll grab another one. And we'll put one right here, and then one more. Just three of them. Isn't that just perfect? Just perfect, I love it. Then we'll grab three more for this card, and we'll just put them in the same place. For those of you that don't really know where to put rhinestones, um, what I do, it's the weirdest thing, but I kind of squint at my card as I'm sort of hoovering around trying to decide where it goes. And when you squint at it, it makes everything look blurry and then it sort of helps you with the placement. I don't know, it's just something I've always done and it just works great. So just if you don't know what to do, kind of squint at it, look at it sort of blurrily and then as you kind of move it around, it sort of just pops out at you where it needs to go. So here is the card. Thank 
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I will um, be doing the drawing for the giveaway on Thursday. So you guys have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.